thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the Gospel of John, John chapter 7, where in verses 1 to 9, we read the account of Jesus being ridiculed by his own family for his mission here on earth. When I read that, I wanted to speak about being rejected. How do we deal with rejection, especially as followers of Jesus Christ? We are told in Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 to 12, that when we are reviled by the world and we're rejected by people for the sake of Christ, we are to rejoice, we are blessed, we are to be happy. We are told this in Luke chapter 6, verse 22 also. We are not to go around angry at people. This is how Christ was treated in the world, and this is how we're going to be treated. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, told us in John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19, that the world hated him, and it's going to hate us also. We're told in John chapter 1, verse 11, that Jesus came to his own, people of his own uh, heritage, his own family, and they, had, they didn't want nothing to do with him. When I came to Christ in 1985, at the age of 19, many people that I thought were my friends, I found out were just acquaintances. Even people in my own household thought that I was going crazy, that I joined a cult, that I was brainwashed. And I used to take offense when people said I was brainwashed, but now I say, yes, my brain has been washed. It's been washed in the blood of Jesus. We have to remember that Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 to 37, he said he did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now he came to give us peace between us and God by dying for our sins and bring us together again. But in human relationships, we're gonna, he's going to come as a sword where he said he was going to divide mother-in-laws against daughter-in-laws, father-in-laws against son-in-laws, parents against children. So oftentimes, even those that are closest to us will not understand why we came to Christ and there's going to be some division there. That is why we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses, especially verses 14 to 18, that we are, not to, we are not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. And those unbelievers can actually be those closest to us in our family. That doesn't mean we don't love our family. We still ought to take care of the needs of those that are in our family that might be unsaved. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8 tells us that if we do not take care of those in our own household as followers of Christ, we're worse than an infidel. We're worse than an unbeliever. So we do not totally abandon our loved ones, but there is going to be division. There's going to be a separation, uh, even with those closest to us. But that's why we have to be reminded we're here to please God and not people. When you come with the word of God, when you speak about what the Bible says or about Jesus Christ, people are going to be exposed for the darkness that they're living in. And by nature, we do not want our darkness exposed. That's what light does. When you go into a room and it's dark and you flick the light on, the light exposes everything that's been going on in the darkness and people want to live in darkness. That's their nature. We are not to take the rejection that people treat us personally. We are to, so to speak, shake the dust off our feet and just keep on moving. My brothers and sisters today, if you feel rejected, even by those closest to you, Psalm 27 verse 10 tells us that though mother and father would forsake us, God will never forsake us. We are told in Hebrews chapter five, uh, 13 verses 5 and 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that he will never leave us nor forsake us. One of the hardest feelings a person can ever experience in their lives is feeling rejection or being rejected by those that they really were supposed to be entrusted to, like a parent. I worked for 12 years in a group home with inner city boys, some girls, been working in a public school system now in an inner city for almost 21 years now. I've seen hands-on the damage that the rejection of parents does to a child's life. I'm not, I'm not undermining it. It could be devastating. But I try to encourage people by God's grace and according to his will that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Even if mother and father would forsake you, there is one that will always be with you, and that is the good Lord. That is who we are to look to, my brothers and sisters. And I will end with this. 
In the passage I just spoke of in John chapter 7, one of the half-brothers of Jesus, and I say half-brothers because Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Yes, he was born of the Virgin Mary, but he didn't have an earthly father. Joseph was like a stepfather. So he had half-brothers, and one of those half-brothers was a man by the name of James. And James ridiculed Jesus and his ministry in the beginning. But after the resurrection of Christ, he became a believer and a, and, a, and a true leader in the church, was persecuted for his own faith and martyred, and actually penned the epistle of James that we have in the New Testament. So when we are ridiculed by those for our faith, don't give up on people. You do not know where that word is going to go. We are told in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 to 11, God's ways are much higher than our ways and that his word will not return void. Our labor, we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, is never in vain in the Lord. It fulfills the purpose which for which it's sent. We might, not see the, we might not see the results that we want right away, but our timing and God's timing are different. His timetable is different than ours. You do not know where those words are going to go. You plant seeds, somebody else might water those seeds, but it's ultimately God who has to give the increase. And according to his will and purpose, he will. He did that in the life of James. James, the half-brother of Jesus, ridiculed him, made fun of him, he mocked him. We're actually told in Mark chapter 3, verse 21, that Jesus' family thought he was nuts. They thought he was out of his mind. But after the resurrection, and he saw the resurrection of his half-brother, he put his full faith in the Lord and was used by the Holy Spirit to pen the epistle of James, as I said, became a leader in the church, in the book of Acts, and was martyred for his faith. So my brothers and sisters, don't give up on your loved ones. Represent Christ in this world. As I said before, if you feel rejection in your life for the sake of Christ, rejoice. Don't be angry. Don't be bitter. Be thankful that you can suffer persecution for the sake of the Lord. For those who have suffered rejection because of the separation from a parent, uh, the neglect or the abuse of a parent or loved one, whatever, I can only tell you, my brothers and sisters, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Jesus Christ will remain with you. If you put your true faith in him from your heart, you will have a friend that will never leave you. God bless you all this day.